What's up everyone? Totally loving the Model X plaid. Had it for about three weeks now, though a week of it, it was at the detailer getting wrapped, but absolutely loving it. We went on a road trip recently, probably about 700 miles total round trip. Super comfortable, the dog's happy in it. Uh, Meg loves it, so it's it's been really great. So as some of you might know, I am a huge fan of the Sea Sucker suction cup roof rack and other products. Um, I had them on the Model 3 for both a road bike and for paddle boards, and it worked out really, really well. Problem is that this thing's got the Falcon doors and um, need to be a little bit more careful about where we put suction cups, um, both for pressure on the doors and hinges and stuff, but also if they're in the wrong place and the door or the trunk gets opened, we're gonna have a problem. So trying to avoid that. So what I'm gonna do today is test out to see how those Sea Sucker products work on here, um, as well as show off my new hitch mounted bike rack. I figured it's got a hitch, I might as well use it. I've always been kind of on the fence about hitch racks. Um, something about hanging a massive amount of um, value off the back of a car that's gonna be the first thing to get rear-ended sort of scares me, but whatever, say la vie, I'm gonna give it a shot and, and see how it goes. So not only do I use the uh, Sea Sucker roof racks, I do have a couple of suction cups for the camera gear. I'm using one right now. Um, on the way over to drop off my wife at the boat, I put one right by the wheel. Here's some footage from that, but they work really, really well. Um, I actually used them on the boat as well when I was in upstate New York. But um, as I said, I love their products. They're super secure. You know, they hold a ton of weight. I've never felt like I'm going to lose anything off the roof, but time for something new. So the rack I've got from Sea Sucker for the bikes is a uh, mini bomber. Uh, it will hold two bikes as shipped, but I believe you can put um, racks on there for two more. Um, never had to do that. It would probably get a little tight on any car you were working on anyway. Um, but it's worked really well for two. Um, all you have to do is get different plugs for different size axles to be able to carry either a road bike or a mountain bike. Yeah, so I'm going to try and see if I can find a spot that it fits on this car. Um, and uh, if not, maybe it's going to end up on eBay. That said, I do love their products. Um, I also have the uh, board racks from them. Those work really well. I'm keeping those no matter what, you know, even though this has the Falcon wing doors and the power trunk that will hit the boards when they're on there. That's kind of the only way I have to carry them with this. So I just have to be really careful, make sure not to hit the button by accident uh, when, I'm, when I've got the board or the racks up there. And I'm gonna try really hard to make sure I'm not attaching the, uh, the suction cups to the doors. I just wanna make sure I'm, um, as gentle with those as possible. I don't really want to break them. All right, so I've got my road bike out here to test the uh, mini bomber, see where we can make it fit. First thing I want to figure out is the distance between where the front wheel is going to sit and where the back wheel is going to sit. So let's call that roughly 40 inches. The door is 42 inches. So we are either going to have to be on the door with something or yeah, we're gonna have to be on the door with something. Given that this is wide and it would touch both doors, I don't wanna do that just in case the door is just deployed. So I'm thinking right up here might be the best bet right on the, uh, the windshield, um, but we might try a couple things. So let me look around. We could go right here or even because this is such a big windshield, we could be almost down here without it beginning in the line of sight. Alternately, we could go backwards with this back here. I don't like that. So I think best bet is gonna be right up here. So I'm gonna judge by where the mirror is. Now, note that right here, this is gonna block my autopilot cameras, so probably not the best solution. I'm gonna go right above the autopilot camera just for a test here. For those of you with big SUVs, you probably already know this, but good to have a stool sitting around, especially when you're washing it and stuff. Um, I got this after I got the car so I could wash it, but 
you know, for a couple bucks on Amazon. Though it's a pain to fold, it's been super helpful. So as you can see, it definitely works. Um, you know, I've got clearance for the autopilot cameras. I got clearance for the door. I would probably pull the entire thing back a little bit. And hey, it works. I would still use this if I hadn't found the other solution. Other problem is you still gotta put a wheel in the car. It's dirty, it's gonna make a mess. I would say these are great for smaller cars, not so much tall stuff that you have to get on top of. Well, now onto the hitch rack. This one uh, requires a little extra effort as well. You gotta put the hitch in. I'm not gonna leave it in there. That's just my style. I don't want it hanging off the back, but some people could leave it in, but it comes in, you know, this little case here. Little blue wrap. I'll show that all to you. So this is the hitch accessory that comes with the car. This does not come with it. It's a nice locking uh, pin to hold the hitch, or to hold any trailer in place. Keys for that. Um, keys for my uh, bike rack. And this key does come with it. You wanna hang on to that. Another thing that doesn't come with it, this seven pin uh, power cable or power adapter. You can go either to a four pin or a five pin. Um, if you've got a new trailer, it'll come with something like this already attached, but older stuff won't. You're going to need that. And then finally, the hitch itself. It comes in a blue bag. I'm going to drop the camera for a second to get this up here. Sorry about that. Uh, but it comes in a blue bag because it will get greasy when you plug it in. So this is what it looks like. You've got a two-inch uh, hitch on that side. You've got the spot for the key to unlock it. Let me show you how that works. To unlock it, you flip this up, you put the key in, you twist to unlock. So you're gonna lift up and then twist. Really hard to do one-handed, but I think you get the point. Once that's twisted, these pins will be unlocked, so you can just push it up into the receiver and it'll lock. You'll notice that I have a quarter here. This doesn't come with it, but good to keep in that little pouch. You'll need it for what's next. This might be a little blown out, but you put the quarter in your twist, you put the quarter in your twist, you kind of jimmy it loose, pull down a little bit on both sides, and then pull back. And now you have access to your hitch. Up in here you've got the hitch goes in there, and then your plug goes in there. So pretty simply here, you take your hitch, jam it up in there, it'll lock. You take the key out, you twist this forward to make sure it's locked and your hitch is installed. All right, this is the Kuat Piston Pro X. It is an awesome rack. I've used it a couple times already. I'm not gonna put the pin in it because no need to lock it, do any of that stuff, but I am gonna plug it in and show you the brake light a little bit later. But pretty much once the hitch is in, that's as easy as getting this thing on here pop it up, put a bike in. But real quick, just to show you, even with it up, total clearance for the trunk, which is just absolutely awesome. But anyway, so it's as easy as putting it in, all the hardware is soft and closed, you tighten it down there, all the stuff locks in. There is a bike lock piece here. As I said, you pop these up. And you put a bike on, and I'll just throw two on here real quick just to show you how easy it is. You put it on, you kind of tighten it down, that bike's not going anywhere. Reverse this one because the handlebars do have to go in different directions. Get this bad boy up here, centered it, go in there, push it. And these are secure. I would feel comfortable driving however far with those. So this will actually be the first time I've tested out the brake lights. Let's see what they look like.
Alright, so that's basically it. It's the Kua Piston Pro X. Thing is awesome. I'll leave a link in the description below, just like I will for the Sea Sucker racks. As I said, I still love those, but if I'm really gonna pull bikes, if I'm gonna go on a long distance, this is better. They're easier to get on and off. They're probably more secure at speed. You're not putting pressure on your doors. Um, and frankly, I can lock them on here and all that stuff. Um, finally, aerodynamics, better? Probably. Not testing it, but uh, you know, I would assume it's pretty good. But you know, once they're on there, again, super simple to get them off as well, right? You just kind of hold the bike and one touch release. Love it. Now you might be wondering, what do you do with this huge rack when uh, you're not using it? Well, this little adapter over here, you just kind of hang it off the wall, works like a charm. I would recommend anyone who's got a rack, no matter if it's a Kuat or otherwise, get one of these things, it keeps it off the floor, keeps it nice and organized. So if you want to see the full reviews of the Sea Sucker Mini Bomber, or the Sea Sucker board racks. I'll put them in a link. I believe it'll be up over here, but uh, have a look. Um, those are full review with the Model 3. As I said, they don't quite fit perfectly on this, but they're still a great option if you don't want to uncover your hitch every time. All right, don't worry. We're waiting for a drawbridge to, to close, so she's just sitting on my lap for a second here. But if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button, and thanks for watching. See you next time.